This time I build a bench with a shoe rack because you can never have enough storage for shoes. You want one too? Follow me and lass uns anfangen! Remember that olive branch I pruned off my olive tree a while back? I kept the piece and I will recycle it for this project. Also, I still have some maple left over from a project from the past that will be great for this one. First step is to cut all the pieces to size. I have a plan in my head, but I don't have the exact sizes just yet. I will finalize the final look later. For now, I've decided to cut 4cm wide pieces out of my 3 quarter inch maple. And I know, I'm annoying with my jumping back and forth with metric and imperial units. I'm way more comfortable with the metric units. But for the thickness, I do refer back to what the lumber was advertised as, like half an inch thickness or three quarter inch thickness lumber. To cut the pieces to size, I'm using my table saw. Some of the lumber has some colorful endings. Simply just shave them off with the miter saw. Next up is that recycled olive tree branch. The best and safest way to cut it is by using the bandsaw. However, that branch is very thick and I had issues cutting off the slices I needed. So I went over and cut the branch on the miter saw. Now, there might be some safety concerns with cutting a branch on a miter saw, since most branches do not sit secure on the surface, but this branch sits pretty secure and doesn't wobble. But decide for yourself, and when in doubt, use a bandsaw. Now I have to come up with a shape for the top. I like to insert the olive cookies into the wood, so I will leave some gaps on the corner and in the middle of the top. That's the shape I came up with. Right now those pieces are still overlapping the olive tree cookies. However, after I glue up the maple, I will trace the pattern of the cookies onto it and cut out the shapes, so it will insert perfectly into the piece. I will start with the glue up of the legs. I will have 6 legs total. After, I will glue up the top pieces. Apply glue to 6 of the pieces. Apply the glue. Spread the glue. And then put the pieces together. Stick together one piece with the glue and one piece without the glue. After you put the pieces together, tighten the clamps. Let this sit to dry while you glue up the top pieces. Let it all dry overnight. Now it's the perfect time to get started on the lower part of the build. To start, let's drill some pocket holes into one side of the pieces. I do not drill the other side just yet, since I'm not sure about the exact size of the top. I will have the exact measurements once I insert the olive cookies and pour the resin. So these pieces here are not to exact size just yet. Try to center the holes to the piece. This one, well, I think I could have done a better job. But it's still okay. It's the next day now and the glue has fully dried. I came back overnight and scraped off the excess glues and I've already run it once through the planer. So I already have a pretty straight surface. I'm gonna run it through the planer to take off anything that I have missed. You can skip this step and just start sanding off any excess to smoothen the board. A belt sander will work great. And here is this beautiful belt sander I've mentioned earlier. This is much more powerful than a regular sander and you have to really hold on tight. So no sanding dance here, sorry, we get to that later. Okay, maybe a little. And look how beautiful this looks now. Let's clean up the edges and then build a shape so I can insert the olive cookies and pour the resin.
for the shape, I'm using a piece of particle board that I had covered in tuck tape earlier. Two of the sides are screwed onto the board. The other side, it's a loose piece, so I can adjust the size. This foam is reusable. You might have already seen me use it in other videos. All the side pieces are covered in tuck tape as well. Adjust the olive cookies to come up with the final look and size of the top. I like the look of this. I trace the shapes of the pieces so I can use my jigsaw to cut out the shapes. And let me tell you something, I'm just not good with the jigsaw. It always comes out so messy. But it's not a problem because I'm a good sander. So I'll make it look good in the end. And that will be a perfect fit. Doesn't this cookie look kind of like a Christmas ornament? Use silicone to hold the loose piece in place. Make sure all is tight because you do not want to find out later once you put a resin that there was actually a small leak. Now let's get our hands sticky. It's time to mix the resin. Wear some gloves and put on a respirator or work in a well ventilated area. I'm using total board resin. This resin has a 1 to 1 ratio. Use a measuring cup to get exact measurements. And now, it's time for the resin dance! And that will be enough mixing. Let's go back down to the workshop to pour the resin. As for the coloring, I've decided to use a white mica powder for a bottom layer. I pour it about 1 cm deep and let it dry. Once dried to a tacky consistency, I pour it over another layer. This time I use two drops of blue ink color to get a very light blue shade. Now let it dry for a few days. Now look at this, the resin has fully dried. Now let's pop it out of the shape. I store away the form for another project. Now I really have to say I love the way the color came out. Let's clean up the corners of the piece. First up, I'm using my miter saw for the short side. I would recommend to wear a respirator for this. Resin always is so messy to cut, it goes everywhere. Now look at this, that's what I mean. I had my dust extractor running and I still got it all over me. I was lucky enough to have one side come out super clean, so I had a straight guide to cut the other side on the table saw. If both sides come out messy, you will have to use your circular saw on a straight edge before cutting the other side on the table saw. The top piece is so long, so I used my planer to help me catch the piece after it came through the table saw. Next step is to shave off any excess resin. I use the simple router sled that I've built a while back. Just pull a handheld router back and forth on the sled to take off a layer of the surface. The bit I used I will link in the description below. Once you've taken off all the extra resin, it's time to smoothen out the piece by sanding. And you know, it's like always, let's have fun with it.
All right, and that will be enough sanding. The board is nice and smooth. Now, since we know the final size of the top, it's time to cut all the pieces for the lower part of the construction to the correct size, so we can add the last of the pocket holes. A stop lock will help to cut the pieces to the right size. And those are all the pieces that we need. Mark the center of the piece. This will be the position for the middle leg. Once you got all the pocket holes and pieces cut to the specific size, it's time to assemble it. Clamps can be helpful to hold the pieces in place. And this is how the finished frame will look like. Pocket holes work great, but look pretty ugly. Luckily, there are plugs on the market that will cover those unsightly holes. Apply a good amount of glue and insert the plugs. Let them dry for about half a day or so. Then come back and use either a Japanese pull saw to cut off the excess or just use a rough grit sanding paper and sand the plugs flush with the surface. Then come back with a finer grit and sand it smooth. Now let's attach the top to the frame. Make sure the frame sits centered, then use some clamps to hold it in place. Three drill holes to attach the screws that will hold the top to the frame. Now you're about to see me mess up here. I always recommend to use some tape to mark the depth of the hole you're about to drill, so you don't cut too deep. And this time I was too lazy to get the tape. So I ended up drilling too deep and came out on the other side, which happens to be the top of the bench. So be smarter and mark the depth. Use a countersink bit to have the screw sit flush. Now let's flip this bench over to see what's the damage. And here's the hole. I'm gonna fill it with some glue and sawdust. Well, now it's not pretty, but I think it's acceptable. I sure learned out of this one. And next up is this cool tool, my bread nailer. I will use this tool to add the slates that the shoes will sit on. Simply add a nail to each corner. This will hold the pieces in place. I've decided to add some furniture legs to the bench. Therefore, I drill some holes to attach the little legs. The legs are fully adjustable. Like always, the link to the product will be in the description below. Perfect, only five more to go. And that's the last leg. Let's flip the bench over and see how it looks. What do you think? I really like my bench. Just perfect. Wunderbar. Now it's finally time for the last step. Let's add a protective layer to it. Maple will yellow when you're using an oil-based finish. So I'm using a water-based one. For this project, I'm using General Finishes Flat Out Flat Top Coat. The instruction asks for three coats. All three coats are applied and have dried. That means we are fair to it. What do you think? Do you like my bench? I can wait to add some of my shoes to it. That technically means I can buy more shoes now. Like always, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe if you haven't done so. Also, thank you so much for using the super thanks to give me a little extra support. Everything goes a long way and it keeps helping me to make more projects. See you next time. Tschüss!
Thank you.